Welcome back to the Scottabyte channel and this is Scott. Today I wanted to take a look at using VLANs to connect either from desktop machines or from servers. So VLANs or virtual LANs are the way to connect multiple networks on a single cable. They isolate traffic which can be helpful for security or performance reasons. And there are many ways to configure and manage VLANs in Linux. This presentation provides a generalized example of one way to define and use a VLAN that works for both desktops and servers. My network router is a Ubiquiti Unify UDM Pro. And in order to create a VLAN, we're going to go down here to the gear for settings. We're going to go to networks create a new network and I'll call my new network VLAN 100. I'll set it as corporate, which just means that it sets up automatic routing, which you can modify with rules later. VLAN 100, the gateway IP address will be 192.168.1.1. And the subnet mask will be a subnet mask of 24. You can see there that gateway IP has been filled in as 192.168.100.1. Broadcast ID, of course, is at 255. There's 254 nodes in the network that go from 1 to 254. And there it shows the subnet mask of 255.255.255.0. And I hit the update DHCP range and it selects a default DHCP range of 192.168.100.6 out to 100.254. Of course, we can modify that to suit our particular needs. And the only reason I'm showing how to do this in Ubiquity is simply because it's very easy and that is my network infrastructure. So I click the save button and now we have the new network created. For what I'm going to show, it's going to be possible to change either a server or a desktop with the technique I'm going to show over to our new VLAN 100. But for right now, if we do an if config, you can see that this desktop is got an Ethernet device of ENP 5S0 and its address that it got from the DHCP server on the mainland is 172.16.1.166. And we're going to learn how to change that to be an address on the VLAN. Part of the reason why we created the new VLAN on the router was that we could have a DHCP server on our VLAN 100. In the past on our videos, I usually have discussed how to create um, containers on VLANs. So how to take a Docker container or a LexD container and put it out there. But I hadn't really addressed how you do it directly with individual systems. So there are some GUI ways to do this, but what I'm showing here is a very simple way to accomplish this, except that this approach will work both on a desktop and on a server. So the first thing we want to do is we want to CD over to NetPlan. In fact, right now it's probably a little bit easier if I do a sudo su. Go ahead and type in my password and now I'm running as root because the files we're going to have to manipulate will be root files and we may have to do several commands. So rather than have to do CD before or sudo before each of them, I'll go ahead and do this. So if we do a CD over to slash Etsy slash NetPlan, NetPlan is a utility that Ubuntu uses in order to configure the network. It's um, much better than doing the uh, uh, link up and link down commands and a series of commands that used to be required in order to create that network configuration. So if I do an ls, usually by default we have some kind of a file out here. 
And this particular one um, is actually named Lexi. I'm not too sure why, because this is a virtual machine here. It doesn't really matter what the name of the file is. The number before it is significant, only that if there's more than one file out here, uh, it will execute them in numeric order. Um, I like to only have one file out here. That way I know that it processes just the file that I want to create the configuration I'm looking for. The only exception to that is that sometimes I like to have my wireless and my wired configuration separate. In this particular case, though, we're only going to work with the wired connection because that's all we're really going to care about for my wired desktop or my wired server. Okay, and we're going to come up here and edit this file. So this file is really basic. You can see that it just configures um, the network and it says there's only one Ethernet device, ENP5S0. We already saw that from the if config command. It says DHCP is true and it has this DHCP identifier MAC. And I guess what that means is it's going to use the same MAC address every time, but I think that's a default anyway. So I'm going to do a bunch of control K's to delete the contents of that file. So here's an example of a new configuration file in order to connect to our VLAN. And the beauty of Linux, of course, is that you can do this in many different ways. So starting out here, I have my renderer as Network D. It could have just as well been Network Manager. Um, Network Manager is generally used for desktops and Network D is generally used for servers. But you can certainly install Network Manager and configure it for a server. We saw earlier where my physical device is called ENP5S0 and I have DHCP uh, set to no so that it won't get an address from the DHCP router or else that address would have been from the main LAN. And then I create a bridges section. So I have the bridge 100 down here and uh, BR100 is going to be a bridge device. You'll recall from some of my other videos that a bridge is simply a software switch. And I'm having uh, the bridge get a DHCP version 4 address from our VLAN that we defined where we define the DHCP scope on the router. And then the interfaces it's going to use are VLAN 100. Well, we haven't defined that yet, but we will below. And then I put in here the default route just so that you could see how it works out. Uh, the default route should be defined by the DHCP server, but I like to put this in here anyway because it reminds me of the configuration. And the default route is via 192.168.100.1. You'll recall that when I created VLAN 100, that was the um, that was the gateway address for the router to get to other networks and out to the WAN. And then again, I put the name server section in here. Your DHCP router would be getting the name servers, but you can go ahead and put in anything that you want in here to override it. And in this case, I gave the two addresses for the Cloudflare DNS servers. And then finally, um, the most important part of it, or the meat of it here, is to define VLANs. So I just defined one VLAN, VLAN 100, and it has the ID of 100, and its link is back to the physical device ENP5S0, and it is not getting a DHCP address. So basically, the physical device is not getting a DHCP address, ENP5S0. And the uh, bridge is not getting, or the bridge is getting the DHCP4 address, and the physical device is not. So now that we have that, we go ahead and save that out, and we can do a net plan apply. And it should have configured it that quickly. And if we do an if config, we will see that at the top of this list, 
we have BR100 and that is getting our address of 192.168.100.142 from the DHCP server that we set up when we defined the VLAN. And so it is in fact connecting to the VLAN or else it wouldn't have been able to communicate to that DHCP server. The physical device ENP5S0 does not have an address because I told it not to get one. It would have come from the main LAN. The loopback connector is still the same, obviously. And VLAN 100 is there so that we have a VLAN 100 device that talks to the VLAN. But rather than have it get the address, I just went ahead and gave the address to the bridge and said the bridge was the default. So none of that's a problem because uh, there are different ways to do it. I've done it where I just create a VLAN 100. I like creating the bridge because that lets me define other things on the server and use the bridge in order to communicate. And you've seen that in other videos. So we can go up here and we can do things like uh, ping of amazon.com and it'll think for a little bit and hopefully connect to amazon.com and there it goes it's pinging that just fine and then i can turn around and ping microsoft.com and this won't actually work and the reason for that is because microsoft is blocking icmp packets which are required for a ping but just to prove that we can connect to these things if i bring up my bra my brave web browser here and then I connect to Microsoft.com, you'll see that I can connect to Microsoft.com and it comes up perfectly. So the other thing that would be great to try out here is can this system be reached from outside the uh, system somewhere else on my network? And a good example of somewhere else on my network would be my desktop machine. So if I do an if config, just to remind me again that the bridge address here is 192.168.100.142. And if we bring a terminal over here and I do a SSH of 192.168.100.142, since I have the SSH server installed on the desktop, I'm able to connect in and there we are logged into the Ubuntu 2204 via SSH. So all of that works just fine. And in fact, I should be able to ping 192.168.100.142 and it does respond as well. So as I mentioned earlier on, there's many ways that you can connect to a VLAN uh, this particular way with the bridge I happen to like because if you're doing things with Docker on this node or you're doing things with LexD on this node, you already have a built-in bridge to be able to handle um, creating other VLANs and other uh, address connections uh, from it. So the other thing I want to point out is that most people that use VLANs, they create a VLAN on their router and then what they do is they go into the configuration and of the switch port that the system is connected to and they do things like connect it to specifically to VLAN 100 like I could do right here. And in this particular case, I wouldn't have had to do anything in that NetPlan file because it would just connect to VLAN 100 automatically in virtue of the fact that the switch port that the system is connected to is dedicated to VLAN 100. But if I don't do that, or say I create a uh, profile that has multiple VLANs, like this one that has uh, my DMZ and my LabNet port profiles, it means that those systems can potentially connect to only these two particular VLANs. So in summary, VLAN connections can be configured both at the switch port of a managed switch and also at the system level of each individual desktop and server. Configuring a VLAN at the system level provides maximum flexibility. We saw how to use NetPlan to configure a bridge to a VLAN. 
A bridged VLAN connection provides an easy way for Docker and LexD containers to use a VLAN directly. So my advice is to use VLANs to improve network performance and security. Anyway, that's it for today. Please subscribe and like to the channel and don't forget to hit that notification bell and we'll see you next time.